Hi, Amy. So you've done this uh, portrait here, and it's looking really good. Um, and I've, I also checked out your DeviantArt, and it looks like you're making a huge improvement. So um, that is very good to see. Um, but uh, there are things that could be improved on. And you said it was okay if I uh, just express my opinion. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, so uh, although like this is really good and I like the colors you used, I like the colors you used for the highlights and the shadows. I like the values actually. I think they're quite quite good, especially for the skin. Um, not so much for, I mean the hair is yeah, but the skin is very good. Um, so let's just take a look at those anyway in black and white. Yeah, yeah, nice. Um, what I feel is the most off though is the way you treated the body. Um, it just looks quite huge uh, in terms of, you know, like, okay, so this is her trapezius coming down like that. And that's, uh, that's and, and, and the neck's going here. And then it's almost like you have a peck area all here. You've got an indication here. I'm not sure of what, if that's like, supposed to be something, but it looks like something. And then I suppose the shoulders go down here, but that's very, very big. Um, so just to do a quick red line, uh, let's say this is the head, right? Got the basic face. And I mean, it's going to, it's going to be different depending on from person to person, but uh, I'll try something, you know, pretty pretty generic and then you know if you make it a bit bigger a bit smaller it shouldn't be an issue so you've got your your ear here and your features are pretty well placed although I feel like there may be a bit too like this eye seems a bit bigger than this one maybe a bit too much because it's okay if it's a if it's bigger because you know perspective uh, would would make that probably the case, I mean, it would make that the case, but um, okay, so we've got that. And let's get a neck coming around here, maybe here, and the center line, maybe going down here. And you've got collarbones here, here. Maybe something more like that um, as a a shape for the body, you know? Because although you fade things off, you know, very artistically with all this brushwork, um, it still got to make sense underneath all of that. So you can't just do this without understanding. It's got to be done because you're, you're creating something artistic and not because you're hiding um, mistakes or things that you're not really sure about you definitely don't want to go down that road so let's just quickly adjust uh, your character to be a bit more in keeping with these uh, proportions and so that's going to be the hair it's going to come over here as you have it that's fine um, and then I'm, I'm going to use the tones of her face to determine what the tones of her body should be by looking at the planes. So for instance, um, this chest area is facing a certain direction, which is upwards. And there's light coming from this direction. So I'm going to look for an area on her that's similar. Maybe like that would be similar. And then you can just block that in. Um, try to bring the hair back. Okay, and then you've got this plane right here, which would be similar to uh, maybe this and this. And it's fine if your thing is, you know, a bit darker because like the light would hit here harder than it hits here. Um, so that's fine. 
uh, but still, it's going to be closer to these values. Because I think, again, you did quite well with, with the face. And, and just to keep it quick, let's just say that. Yeah, it's a bit. Oops, gotta do this part of the body as well. Now that's a bit more in keeping with how I would handle it. And then if you want to be artistic and you know hide stuff and let things fade off. Again, that's that's completely fine. But just make sure at least the underneath drawing, the underdrawing is is correct. So you don't want to be caught in a position of a lack of knowledge and then trying to make cheats or gimmicks to, to get away from that. And I'm not saying that's exactly what you did, but uh, it is kind of what it looked like. So there's that. That's one thing. Um, and with the hair, I feel like it could be a bit higher on her head, like a bit, a bit more hair. Uh, it's not too bad though. Okay, the next thing is the amount of purple. It's a lot. There's just a lot of purple. And it feels like you've got purple and you've got it contrasting with the, the lips. And that's, that's okay, you know. It's okay to have that. That's not bad. You've got like sort of a monochrome, monochromatic uh, palette. But what it's, what it's doing is it's taking away from some of the interest that you could have. Usually, for instance, I like to make the eyes stand out. And in your image right now, the eyes are not really standing out the way they could. And I'm just gonna fix the size of this because it's, as I, as I showed before, you know, it's a bit on the small side. Um, maybe more like that. Okay. So yeah, the eyes are kind of getting lost. And one thing you could do is just shift the, the hue and the saturation. So make it more like, you know, maybe even something like this, you know, get a bit of, of blue in there. Um, just to make it pop more, you know? And I like that there's a the purple as well, because then the blue and the purple sort of mix. And you still can have, you know, the purple feeling, but it doesn't have to be just pure purple. You can throw in some hue variation uh, in there too. And get a highlight. And you have a highlight there. So let's get one here and maybe even go towards like a teal, like a little bit of blue, just, just to hit it across uh, from the highlight so it looks like the highlight's much more jewel-like. And that's gonna make the eyes pop. Um, but the hair and stuff is still being lost because again, it's purple on purple. And what I would do if I was in your shoes is we have purple and blues and stuff. I'd go probably towards an orange and pretty desaturated, maybe even something like that or maybe a bit brighter like that or something. And I would just have some of that to contrast against the purple. Now you don't need to put it everywhere, um, but maybe in places where uh, you want things to stand out. So let's say the hair on that part is interesting. Maybe here there's some interest in, in the way you have this shape, you know, uh, possibly here as well. So I'm just looking for, for spots where I could incorporate that color. And then I'm gonna mix it with the background and let it 
fade off back into this purple. So you're not losing that purple, but it just adds another dimension to things. So by adding something like that, see how we have now the purple standing out a lot more? And it will also neutralize some of that purple in areas like this where it's a bit too strong like around here because you've got to think every everywhere you have this saturated color it's going to be a focal point your eye is going to lead there so you want to make sure that things are appropriately placed and if i put this orange over this purple it's gonna again neutralize it. it's going to become more grayed grayed out which is kind of good because what's going to happen then is you will be forced to look at areas of, of interest. And right now um, I made this sort of a focal point, which isn't necessarily uh, the best thing because um, now you're not looking at the eyes as much. So uh, one way around that is to really, you know, pump up the eyes again and add some color and then you're, you're gaze will go back to that eye. Another thing I could do is to possibly tone down this orange a bit more. But in theory, you know, I, I feel like it is helping to have that purple neutralized just a bit. And you don't have to be afraid of putting things down a bit too strongly like maybe the orange as I had it originally was a bit too strong but you're always going to blend things out anyway or I mean that's always an option so you know don't worry too much you can tone it down later okay so we've got that and then maybe here as well you know, it doesn't have to be crazy but you've got this and think about what's really important to you what are you trying to to say what's your statement um, maybe you want you really want to convey how cool and flowy this hair is um, well then really think about it really think about these shapes and how they read and How to make it interesting, you know, like think about your brush strokes. Um, because I think you kind of are, and that's very good to see, but you could design it even more, you know, just thinking about basic shapes. And I'm also thinking in terms of highlights and shadows, because the way your highlights are, they're okay. Um, but they could be a bit more uh, defined, especially in the hair, because you will get contrast where you have that uh, light shine, you know? Um, so let's just pick some of the hair and maybe add some highlights. that are a bit stronger. Where the light might hit. And I'm also gonna think about color variation. So you've got like a lot of this purple and I'm gonna put in some pinks as well just so it sort of warms up and cools down in areas. And having warms against cools adds a lot of interest. So, you know, putting in some areas that are a bit more pink or some areas that are a bit more, you know, greeny or blue or cold, um, that can add just excitement to your colors so they're not just boring and, and flat. Um, but rather that they have personality to them. Um, 
All right. Um, so we did the eyes and the eyebrows now. Something with eyebrows is you kind of want to keep them a bit softer. Um, I mean, unless you're really going for very dramatic eyebrows that don't look too natural. And I know, I mean, I've seen that in terms of um, fashion, but let's just say, because you're interested in my opinion, uh, you want it a bit more natural. What I would do is I'd soften it a bit, especially as it um, is higher. Like, let's say it gets darker in this area, because this part right here, uh, let's use a different color here. And that's the, the orbit of the eye, right? The eye socket. So it's going to get a bit darker right there. But then here, this is on this plane with the forehead. So it's going to get lighter. So I'm going to put that in there. And I'm just going to sculpt your shape. So it's more like this where the nose goes around like this and like this. Okay, so we'll get that in. Then I'm going to soften some of this transition because I feel like it's a bit too strong the way you have it. Just soften that a bit. And this highlight right here that you've got, it's something that you do get a highlight in this area, but it's usually more around here, like a bit higher than that. So you get it more like that. Um, and remember that the eyelid is a three-dimensional shape. So, uh, I mean, you kind of did that but I would push it a bit more. Okay, so you got your highlight here, fine. And then you're probably gonna get a highlight on the, the bridge of the nose as well. If you've got a light and it's this strong right here, probably get one around here as well. And then you've got one on the cheek, which, you know, that'll likely happen. Now, the way you've got your lighting, this part of the face is going this way and then it's going to go down. So I like how subtle you've kept everything, but I would still, you know, add a bit of a plane change here where the plane turns. So I don't know if you can detect that, right? I just feel it turning a bit more and then Make sure you feel this chin as well, as a rounded form. Um, okay. So, right here where you've got the hair and the side of the face, I think that's an opportunity because they're both in shadow. It's an opportunity to kind of blend things and let things become a bit mysterious. Um, in here, I'm just going to define the neck a bit more and you can lose some edges. So this is something that's nice to see in, in art. Um, painters do this a lot, but I think it's something that maybe illustrators do not enough. And that's to really just let an edge disappear into shadow. Um, and this eye feels like it needs to actually be a bit darker, getting a bit less, you know, attention. Because another trick is to ensure that one of the eyes is getting a lot of attention and the other one is getting less attention. It's just sort of more to the, to the background. It's more quiet. Um, so maybe something like that. All right. So a lot of what I'm doing right now is just very minor adjustments to things. You don't have to do that much because, I mean, you pretty much have got most of the, you've done most of the heavy lifting. I'm just kind of smoothing out some things here and there, um, adding a bit of a gradient to the forehead so it's darker on this side and then it gets lighter on this side. Um, 
thinking about the hair, I like that you've got this shadow here. Um, I'm just going to let it blend in with the shadow that you have on the forehead as well. And then where the hair meets the skin, I think it would be nicer to have a very soft edge where that happens. So that dis, uh, distinguishes this part where the hair is touching, like it's coming out of the skin, out of the scalp. And then this part, which is overlapping. Yeah. And yeah, you probably could add some, some lights and stuff here. All right. Okay. Now, with the ear, it's nice that you let it get into shadow and sort of um, fade off. But I think, you know, all I did was just add some brush strokes to make that a bit more hazy and blend the values a bit better. So you've got, went from this to this. Um, now I'm seeing, just flipping back and forth, that I did change, I ended up changing the expression. I made her eyes a bit too vibrant. Um, and that's something that I feel I lost a bit of the mood that you had originally. So what I'm gonna do is try and make the eyes a bit more dull and maybe a bit darker to bring back some of that mystery that you had. Yeah, I think that's a bit better. Okay, and also you had a specific shape to the eyebrows, which I'll try and get back as much as I can. Yeah, something more like that. Okay. All right. So now with the lips, I feel like this line doesn't feel natural the way you have it. Um, you got darker here and that's good, you know, that's fine. But you have to keep this very soft. And lips in general are very soft. So that means you wanna go for a softer edge because if you get too hard, too hard edged, um, when I say you know, hard and soft, I mean talking about edges here. Um, what happens is that it stops feeling like skin so much. Um, so what I can do, what I tend to do is I'll like put some crossing, kind of like this type of motion, uh, brush strokes, and then I take the areas around and I kind of incorporate that and I build off these X's, if you will, just these type of brush strokes. And what it does is it creates more of a blending. And then I'll go ahead and put back some of the original tones. So it just gets to feel a bit more cohesive, like things are just a bit more together. And I think in general, the lips are a bit too dark because when you have lips, they're usually similar to the skin color. Um, and you kind of have that here, like in this area, which is good. Um, but the top lip is usually not gonna be that much different. I mean, it might look that way in photos and things, um, but the way you've, you've painted it is not really like a photo. It, feels more like a, a painting and so you can ease up on the, the harshness of those lips even more than you have. Um, and then you've got like a highlight here, but it's again, can be a bit more defined, I feel, in terms of where these things are happening, like where does this lip go how does it blend into the to the face because right now it seems like you you observed a lot in terms of other illustrators and what decisions they've made and you're trying to replicate some of those things but it's not quite exact yet and so it seems a bit off like some of the placement is just a bit off um, and for the cheeks i'm going to actually warm it up just a bit so I'm increasing the saturation and just getting some warm in there is going to bring things together and then soften 
this transition. Okay, and let's bring back your expression because I kind of lost it with the mouth as well. So I'm going to warm up the mouth, uh, especially in this area where the lips meet. I'm going to warm it up quite a bit. But I'm not going to create the line just like that. You know, it's too strong. I'm going to let this part be soft where it overlaps and get a bit darker on this edge. And what that does is it makes it, and then now I'm just using a smudge brush to smooth out that. So it makes it feel a bit softer and that this lip, because you, you lose some of that edge right there, you know, here where the lips meet, it feels like you've got overlap going on and I mean, with a smudge, I mean, this is entirely up to you, but if I just take a smudge brush, uh, and here I'm just using a, just a soft blending brush, uh, you can see how just by blending in some of these tones, uh, it can look a bit more finished. But you've got to pay attention to the brush strokes See, if I just do like smudging like this, it's gonna look stupid. I've got to think in terms of, okay, so this part is going in this direction and it smudges out like that. And then this part, you know, like I'm following the forms. Um, and I still feel like I made the neck too big. So what I'm gonna do is cut it down to about that and bring in, some hair, some extra hair. And I feel like for the shape that adds more. Alright, so Gonna soften this as well, and when I soften it, I, I just took a bit, bit of the shadow color and I just went over it like I'm kind of drawing a line but letting it blend a bit, and that tends to you know help. And then here you've got some brush strokes things, and uh, actually, those are mine, but uh, you can I don't know, like you can do these types of brushy effects. I'm not great at this, so um, forgive me for you know not doing a great job, but yeah, that's really terrible. <laughs> um, but you can do that at the end as well, or just paint that way where things are a bit more uh, soft and see, just letting it fade into this purple and. I'm just getting rid of some of the harsh edges with a, a soft blender. So I've got the harder edges and the softer edges. And I feel like this area, all this, is getting too much attention. So what I'd like to do is take some of this dark from the hair and use it to just using a soft brush. I'm just using it to, to blend some of these colors together. So you've got sort of a spotlight on the area of interest here. And then this part gets a bit hazy. I might have overdone it a bit, but um, the idea behind it is that I'm just trying to neutralize some of the parts that were standing out and also create more of a feeling of air and mystery here. So the parts that I want you to look at are gonna get very defined and the parts I don't want you to look at are gonna get much more hazy and lost, if you will. Okay, so there we go. And finally, just a bit on the 
the hair. You've got these interesting things in the hair. I don't know, they look like flowers and stuff. Uh, just gonna cheat, put on a color dodge layer and enhance them a bit just with a soft brush, just by bringing in. Uh, I just took a dark gray and then that'll let some of this stand out more uh, with, a, with a color dodge. And you know, bringing in some more of that light. Okay, so something like that. And um, let's just do a before and after. Oops, gotta flip it. So this is before and after. You know, I, I, again, I lost some of your energy lines. Um, you could probably add those back in. Uh, but I'll leave that to you because I think you're better better at that than I am. Um, but yeah, so uh, before, you know, things aren't standing out enough. Everything's getting lost. There's this rhythm you've got going with this big circle going like that, which is cool. But um, I think this may be, I mean, I still think you could be focused more on the the eye up there, so um, maybe I'd still take some of this purple and fade it a bit so your eye goes towards her face, but it brings you up more. And then the inclusion of different colors, like even just a bit of orange and then mix it with the purple and a bit of green in the eyes uh, really can make things stand out. Um, and of course, you know, again, since if it was me, what I would do is, and this is just personal taste, I tend to go a bit overboard with it uh, just because I like color. So I might do something even extreme like that. That might be a bit, you know, too much, but sort of that idea, you know. Just create like a eerie look, I suppose. Um, maybe tone it down just a bit. But I feel now you look right at the eyes. And if you wanted it, so the eyes are purple and that's just the selling point. Like she is a purple eyed person. Um, you could consider doing something like just bringing the eyes. Well, okay, that's a bit too much, but towards more of a purple and letting everything move accordingly. Uh, so I just did that with a hue and saturation layer. So I moved everything a bit more yellow so that the purples stand out more and the hair goes a bit more red. But you know, again, it's a, just a matter of, of opinion. And then play around with warms and cools a bit more and as, in your values. Um, especially in, sh and let, in shadows, let the shadows kind of blend out. You know, you don't have to be super distinct. See how hard this edge is right here. Um, right here. It's very hard. It doesn't need to be that hard. So that's pretty much it. I hope this helped and thanks for watching.